Hi, I'm Dr. Prama Meehan, and in this video, I would like to debunk the myth about alcohol and sleep. In today's society, we know that people are beyond tired and always looking for some way to help them get a good night's sleep. Quite often, people will have a drink before they go to sleep to try and help them sleep better. But does alcohol actually help you sleep better? See, alcohol is in a class of drugs called sedatives. In the early stages, it will sedate that part of your brain that's responsible for your impulses. So it will relax you, get rid of some of your inhibitions, and it may actually help you sleep faster. But over time, the effects of alcohol will start creeping in the brain and start sedating other parts of the brain, which will start to help you lose consciousness. Consciousness is not sleep. So when we look at brainwave activities, loss of consciousness brainwave activities is extremely different from your sleep stages. When we sleep, we have different stages of sleep. We begin with stage one, which is light sleep, to stage two, down to stage three, which is our deep restorative sleep, and then to REM sleep. And that's one cycle of sleep. And this cycle repeats itself throughout the night. The first half of the night is devoted to more of your deep restorative sleep, and the second half has more REM sleep. Now, even a moderate amount of alcohol can really disrupt, disrupt these different stages of sleep. Alcohol is a very strong suppressor of REM sleep. Remember, REM is that stage of sleep where we have a memory consolidation, that part of sleep that helps us learn new things, emotional healing happens during that time, and so much more. Also, with alcohol, we have something known as the rebound effect. So in the second half of the night, you have a much more fragmented sleep. So you're gonna wake up a lot more frequently. So with alcohol, you've got REM suppression, you got fragmented sleep, and you have to get up to go to the bathroom a lot. All three things which are gonna end up resulting in a really poor night's sleep. Now alcohol, according to the research, affects women more than men, mainly because women tend to metabolize and break down alcohol faster than men. So for some people, even one glass of wine can really disrupt their sleep. Now what about my sleep apnea patients? Remember, if you have sleep apnea, your airway muscles are already a little bit weak, meaning that when you fall asleep, the muscle tone decreases and you start to collapse your airway muscles. And that's why you start to snore and that's when you stop breathing. But if you put alcohol in that mix, now you're gonna have the added relaxation of those already weak muscles. And that's gonna set you up for a night of more snoring but more significantly, more apnea events. Disaster. Like a lot of people think that if they heard somebody snoring really loudly all night long, wow, they must have had a really good night's sleep. But the truth is, if you're snoring loudly and consistently all night long, you have expended a tremendous amount of effort just to breathe all night long. And chances are that person's gonna wake up feeling exhausted the next day. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have a glass of wine with dinner or that you can't go out and have a good time with friends. We just need to think about how much alcohol is too much for sleep. Now, it's a very individual answer simply because everybody has a different capacity for breaking down alcohol. I like the Lotto Max commercial that says, know your limits and stay within it. Now, according to the research, for an average person, if you were to limit your intake of alcohol, you can have alcohol two or three times a week without disrupting your sleep. When is the best time for your body to break down that alcohol? Mid to early evening. So sadly, the infamous happy hour is a time for your body to break down and metabolize alcohol, not to actually ingest it. Now life is short, you have to enjoy life but it's really important for you to take the time to prioritize and take care of the things that are important so that you can really enjoy your time with your friends and family. And don't be afraid or embarrassed to talk to me about your snoring concerns at your next dental appointment. Remember, education and awareness is the first key towards you promoting your own health and well-being. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, everybody.